Hello, and welcome to Drinking with Comics. This is issue number nine. I'm Sean. Mike Wellman is over there. And today, our very special guest, Chris Gore. Let's give him a big hand. Again, <laughs> live studio audience. We have Joe Dot Baxter behind the guns as usual. We have Aaron. See, I can never do this, man. We have Aaron and Sarah, our Hi. science officers. Hello. What's up, um, ladies? Running, you know, the behind the scenes kind of thing. Um, sending out all kinds of keeping uh, it real. Yeah, social stuff, media. Yes. You know, hexes and voodoo and whatnot. So with the wish you were here is yes, yes. Yeah. Like Speaking it. of wish you were here, I, I wish Neil Gaiman was here tonight, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so why? I could apologize about all the ugly things I said about him last week. <laughs> <laughs> Most of what I said it out. Actually, I, but. I must have been drinking arrogant bastard on the last episode because you were. Oh, was I? Yeah. Okay, so because funny. it certainly came out like that. And uh, Neil, I'm sorry. Coldplay, I don't apologize for anything I said about you. Um, <laughs> But yes, on, on with the show. On with the show. So, um, all right. Well, first, let's talk about Chris. So, you just had... Um, He's blushing. I'm embarrassed. Your, <laughs> your first comedy album, but it's an album and a book, correct? Right, yeah. Just to get the plugs out of the way. I did a... Um, you know, people don't buy CDs anymore, right? I mean, in fact, most people... Most people... Well, true. <laughs> but most people's devices, they don't even make... You yeah, know, right. I mean, the MacBook Air doesn't have a CD drive. So comedians don't sell CDs anymore, but what you what they do sell are download cards at shows. And I thought, well, that's kind of lame. You go to a show, spend ten bucks, and you get a little card. I thought, well, I'll just make a book. So I did a book which is based on it's a parody of the book Everyone Poops, and it's called Celebrities Poop. So on the opening <laughs> page, it says, Oprah makes a big poop. Justin Bieber makes a small poop. <laughs> and the book also has got you know Miley Cyrus is in it and Lady Gaga and. Howard Stern, and it's it was just a different way to market and promote a comedy album. And I'm doing, my second comedy album will be coming out in the fall. It's called Girls Eating Hot Dogs at 2 a.m. Mm. And I had... Is that a photo book? It's, well, no, what it is is I'm doing a commemorative poster to go with the album. And the album is a giant hot dog made of hundreds of photos of girls eating hot dogs. So it's one of those mosaic pictures. Oh, wow. He's like and, sold. And I had, <laughs> so it's, 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 it's you know, from a distance, it's like, oh, that's a giant hot dog. And then you look and you're like, no, that's a bunch of photos of girls with hot dogs in their mouths. Oh, so. this is on your, your Twitter has a right. picture. Yeah, okay, right, right. So, so anyways, I collected just from, you know, social media, I had hundreds of women send me photos of themselves eating hot dogs. So I've been working on the material for that album. I and bet be, you have. Yeah. It's like, so ladies, I need pictures of you eating hot dogs. Well, I mean, just in comedic, just ways that are, <laughs> you know, because I, 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 I always love that image in, in Hollywood when you're there and you see the girls that are they're punchy drunk, mm -hmm. they're stumbling around like, you know, Bambi trying learning to walk in their high heeled shoes. They're angry. They know they're not getting fucked. And they want one of those delicious bacon wrapped hot dogs. Yes. Which, who doesn't when you smell them? I identify right? with them. Oh, uh, yeah. So, so, so that, I always just found that it, in, image really interesting mm -hmm. and started just talking to girls that w were at the hot dog stand that had just given the fuck up on the evening. I was going to say, once you get a bacon wrapped hot dog, you're not kissing yeah. anybody. You're not, no. yeah, exactly. You know, it's. Except it, me. Yeah, so you know you're just you're not when you're when you're going out to eat after your evening, you're not you're eating food because you're not getting fucked. That's basically let's be honest. You know, yeah. if you're if you're going to in and out, you're not doing the in and out. You I, know can't, what I'm I can't physically eat when I think I'm gonna get laid because I'm right. so nervous. Like I might get laid tonight, you yeah, know? And then, exactly. Yeah. And then when you get when you reach a certain point I might fart if I eat. Yeah, I don't wanna <laughs> I don't wanna have any weird bowel movement action down there right. before I'm about to be intimate with a woman. I think that's just rude. I think it's rude. That's called being classy, dude. Exactly. I have a question about this. How book. did we segue into this? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Why? What am I doing on the show? Well, we all know where Justin well, Bieber's headed, right? So, so Oprah makes a big poop. Justin Bieber makes a small poop. So, I mean, Justin's kind of headed on the fast track to prison. You think his poops will get bigger? No, I bet they'll. De uh, yeah, they're definitely. They're, they're going to fall out. But what's funny is I actually got an email from Oprah's company. Oh, oh boy. From it was the the email address was brand protect at Harpo Productions. Com. The lawyer for Oprah had discovered this book, and I thought for a minute they were going to try and shut me down because they canceled my Etsy listing. 
Which, really? Sean, I have to thank you for purchasing a copy yeah. of my book, available at celebritiespoop.com. <laughs> and but you can get the digital version on Kindle. Anyway, I heard it's so, Oprah's book in a month. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> Oprah's book club. But, so, so, so they shut it down, and then I had this really pleasant exchange with the lawyer from Harpo Productions who said, look, we have no problem that you've done an incredible painting of Oprah taking a shit in your book. <laughs> That's not the issue. The issue is you can't use Oprah's name to sell the book. So all I did was delete Oprah's name from the description of the oh. book on Etsy, and then I can sell this book that contains a painting of her taking a crap. Huh. America. So America. just so you know, oh, I don't know. And I, I used to, I used to be an Oprah hater. Now I'm kind of. Why would I not like her? Yeah. I mean, you learn something from I, her. I, I you know, le learn some little something about the legal system. Yeah. I don't know. yeah. And and all those people who got free cars, they learn something from her too. Like you got to pay taxes on Exa this shit. Exactly. <laughs> but, but it's, it's, it is it is protected because it's considered satire and parody. Right. This is this is what you would describe as a novelty book. And my goal is to my goal is actually to get this book into like every Urban Outfitters in the United States. Smart. A friend of mine actually wrote this book. This is true. A friend of mine wrote a book called Penis Pokey. Oh, you heard we carried it at Borders okay. when we worked. You see your face this, light up when you said penis friend pokey? Is, friend of mine did that book, <laughs> Penis Pokey. He self-published it and for two years tried to get it into stores. And all it is, if you don't know what Penis Pokey is, it's a very innocent children's, looks like a children's book, and it's card-backed, right? So all the pages are actually cardboard, and there's a giant hole in the center of the book, and there's innocent picture of, like, an elephant and where the elephant's nose is is where the hole is. A snake charmer, and then like where the snake is, is there's a giant hole. Presumably, one might put their penis inside the <laughs> hole in the book, which is not, but it's just, it's just, there's nothing dirty in the book. Yeah. So for two years, he was trying to, and finally Urban Outfitters did a test. I guess they do all their tests of new products in like Baltimore. Hmm. And then they ended up buying, you know, tens of thousands of copies. That book is a novelty book that's always in print. Mm -hmm. So my goal, is to actually have celebrities poop become one of those novelty books that will be yeah. But what I do now is okay. This is I don't know if what I'm gonna Can tell I just you. Pause you real quick. Something I have two logistical questions okay, about penis okay. pokey. How do you read it if it's on your penis? <laughs> right. Number one and number two. How do you turn pages if it's on your penis? Good question. One would and hope you're that, erect. Yeah, exactly. One would hope you would not be turning pages. <laughs> okay, all right. Go, but it's sort of a, sorry. Continue. It's on. like a cock ring in the form of a book. Yeah. But it, so 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 what I've been doing. This sounds horrible because this book, to the wrong like this is not for children, right? Because there's, there's celebrities bad pooping. In there. Well, I don't know about this. No, I mean, I look like at the, the look at this spread here. It's pretty. With kids and then, well, there's like, a bunch of different and and each each person has a different. They're they're pooping in a different way, so you can actually tell who is who in this. If you look at their their poop, who's that? Uh, well. I forget who that is. This is Charlie. This is Charlie Sheen, though you can oh, tell okay. from the tattoo. And, oh. Anyways, so I've been taking copies of this book and very, and Banksy's done stuff like this, right? I'll just go into stores and I'll put it on the right. bookshelf and walk away. So I've gone to like ArcLight Cinemas. They've got all their little novelty, cute books. I've gone to Urban Outfitters and I'll just put it where it looks like it would fit. The best part is I'll go back to ArcLight Cinemas and I'll leave like five there. I'll come back in a you know like a week later and there's like two and there people are buying people them. Buy it, yeah. So, yeah. So until it's it's actually legal to buy this book, this is the first edition. That's how Master uh -huh. P used to do it. You know, he just go like put his CDs on shelves and stuff. Well, yeah, I love Guerrilla Tactics. It's very punk mm -hmm. rock because I think we've had this discussion before, Mike. Like, yeah. You and I are very, we come from old school punk rock days. Yeah. So it's like even like, you know, when I think of marketing, I think of like that, you know, uh, Malcolm McLaren style of, mm -hmm. of Guerrilla punk rock style marketing or that's just always, I can't get it out of me no matter what I do or, you know, what jobs I do. I'm, I'm always have that sort of punk rock Thing right on the chip on my shoulder, nice. a little bit. That's yeah. good, man. That you know what I'm talking about. In a positive way, not in a negative. Yeah, not in a fucked up stuff no. up way, but, but like, in, but in like a, in a. Uh, I just I want to you know mess with the system. I'm, I mean, if I had if, if I had written a book called Celebrities Poop and snuck it into a store, I couldn't help. I would have to hang around and just see who picked it just up. To see right? if anybody yeah. picks it up. Oh, I love, I thought, or, I love or see that. like what happens when you try to. Do, oh, there is no barcode. So. Right, <laughs> but I love I love when people pick up the book who have no idea who I am. Like they're. You know, I mean, it is a comedy album in the form of a book, but you know, um, it, it's like a comedy album that comes with a free book. I Who's guess. Haley Gore? That's my daughter. Oh, okay. She did all the illustrations in the book. Forty-seven illustrations of celebrities pooping. 
And she's actually a very accomplished artist. And actually, in the back of the book, she writes this thing about how she disavows doing this. And she's kind of ashamed at having done it and embarrassed. And it's, it's, I think it's funny. Cause Daddy really made me do it, huh? Basically, Daddy made me do it. <laughs> nice. So, at some point, we're going to do an art show and sell the paintings. Dude, we can we have a gallery back here. If, you know, if nobody fancy can, will take you, we can we can do it. <laughs> we can do it. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have do a, the celebrities poop art show tour. Yeah, we're gonna have Mike Mignola's art show back oh, here on awesome. uh, Saturday. Plug time. Sorry, that's nice. awesome. No, that's good. That's, that's cool. 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 Wait, that's this Saturday. That's this Saturday. Yeah. Oh God, we're in July now, aren't we? Yeah, no shit. Not, yes. Wow. That's my long winded description of the book. So I'm no, sorry. No, no, I love I'm it. So dude. off on that. No, that's you know. good. It's good. I, mean, I dude, think it's full of shit. Talk about it. Exactly. Exactly. Um, mm. So okay, so let's talk about the beer that we're drinking next. Okay. So, oh yeah. First of all, um, I went looking for something that I hadn't had before, and I've been really into cans lately. You have been. You've been bringing. You know, well, okay. The Vaughn's bias had Sierra Nevada and cans recently, and I think we've had the Newcastle discussion here before, where Newcastle's this wonderful British brown ale that's, uh, you know, typically packaged in a clear glass bottle. So it's nine. Well, let's say seven out of ten times it's ruined by light affecting the beer so if you find Newcastle in cans it's amazing you're like oh my god this reminds me of what it's like you know on tap or whatever so I was like oh, I've never had Sierra Nevada in a can I had it it was, it was great and there's just something okay now we will all remember this you re remember reading newspapers I, I still read newspapers. That, so do I. Is it like the internet, but on really thin slices of wood? Yes. <laughs> That's exactly what it's like. That's what the newspaper is. That's exactly what it's like. That's but cool. there, there is actually something about, uh, like I used a couple years ago, I used to go to the Starbucks on my day off when I worked at the bookstore, and I would pop like a quarter into the thing out front and get a newspaper and fold it out just because there's something so... I mean, it's like traveling back in time in a way. It's just something that it's not done a lot anymore. It's been taken... I mean, they still come out, dude. I, yeah, I have, right. a, I have LA Times every Sunday. It's, I get for the just, Best Buy. It's in. interesting, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, nice. I love that little <laughs> Best Buy insert. Nice. Yeah. yeah, but so cans, it's kind of the same thing. Like I'm drinking the Sierra Nevada. I'm like, wow, this is, like really takes me back to drinking like Stroh's with the pull tab in the woods uh, and stuff. Stroh's. You know? Yeah, right. When, when you were like tab. ten. <laughs> yeah, well, not ten, eleven, you know, whatever. No. You you are really into cans. I, Sean took me out. He told me he was taking me out for sushi uh, last week, and. Uh, so I go out, you know, he picks me up. It's really fancy. I wore the nicest clothes I could find. And he pulls out <laughs> two cans of sardines. He's like, here's your sushi, bitch. <laughs> nice. He really likes I cans. I still have some left, actually. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Um, yeah, so, okay, so the beer that I brought this week is Saranac. And I'd never heard of it before. Sarah, Science Officer Sarah, actually found it um, in a BevMo. And it was in cans. And uh, it's a white IPA. Okay, IPA, we've talked about this before too. It's a little hoppy for my taste, but some of them, like, they know how to smooth it out. So I, I kind of looked around on the internet. It seemed like it was one of the milder ones. I tried it. I don't know. What do you think? I think it's good. Dude, I, a beer has to be really shitty for me not to like it. I, I like it. It's good. <laughs> well, That's my philosophy. <laughs> well, here's the thing with the, the IPAs is if you drink like six or seven of them, mm -hmm. you get that like hops tongue, and then that's just, I mean, it's like hot. But you don't even feel it by that point because you're yeah, so drunk. Yeah, that's, maybe that's or true. some of us um, are. But we also have, so... Now, what, what are you drinking, young man? This is uh, I, well, I Gore's Light. I, I'm, drink, I'm drinking Gore's Light is basically what, <laughs> what I'm drinking, yeah. Well, we were talking about it before the show. It's like, for me, it's like Coors Light is like that all-day beer. You can just sort of drink it. it it's, like a, it's like club soda with a hint of beer flavoring. Yeah. And so, so it's it's something where you just you can keep drinking them, keep drinking them, keep drinking them, and you're like, I think I'm buzzed. Am I buzzed? So I always I like to whenever I'm doing like some dumb household task like painting the garage or doing yard work, it's like that's the beer that I will drink while I'm working. Or it's, pod crashing. Or pod crashing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I, I I like that kind of stuff. Do you remember? Oh, go ahead, Sean. No, I was just gonna say it's you know moving out here where Coors from the Midwest, where Coors is kind of has this market here where Butter Miller has it in the Midwest. Like I'll take it over. Like we used to do that with Miller Lite. They I don't think they did this anywhere else. They'd sell it in eighteen packs of bottles for a while. You go to the liquor store at two a.m. because you've been drinking all day, and mm -hmm. you buy an eighteen pack, and it's the same thing. It's like how did we three of us just kill this and. I think I'm, I, I mean, I kind of buzz, but because there's so much water that it's just like constantly flushing your system, I guess. I don't know. I have a beer question. 
You guys, you guys might remember. So in the '70s, Smokey and the Bandit. Like I thought, Coors was special because they had, they had to bootleg it across country in, in the first Smokey and the Bandit movie. Is that really? Why? Yes. Yeah. I mean, you, you have an answer for that. I Are love you. Go you. The mic? Yeah. Yes, go to the mic. Tell us why. Oh, why did Why did they have to bootleg Coors right across the country? They had a special marketing campaign where they actually stopped. I believe they stopped selling it east of the Rockies. Okay. That's why it's really? the beer of the Rockies. My dad talks about Coors in like almost mythic terms <laughs> because this was in the seventies, and he taught and he would talk about how they did this like mythic campaign, and they just sort of they really like shut down distribution, and it was almost like an anti campaign because they sort of just stopped providing it. It was like self inflicted. They sort of just stopped selling it, and, and then it sort of became like this cult thing. So I assume that's what's going on in Smoking the Bandit. Hmm. Interesting. I have to look into that, that sounds like when they pull some a product off the shelves to actually create demand. If it's not really there, right? Like, then suddenly, Maybe like, we should Google that. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's nothing better than having Burt Reynolds says. like scoot your beer across country to get people wanting to drink it. I mean, I was six, and I I, was, I started drinking Coors when I was seven, dude. <laughs> 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 like, so, but cool. Awesome. But moving on. <laughs> moving on. Um, wait, we have one more beer here now. Oh. Joe Dot Baxter and um, Aaron brought an, a beer. Um, yeah. Oh, this one's empty. Um, I don't know. I just went to Total Wine, and I was just like, oh, this has a beer and antler, a bear wearing antlers on it. That's cute. It's, it's called <laughs> Anderson Valley Boont Amber Ale. Um, so you like beers with cute things on the label. It would help. I think more people <laughs> should have cute things on the label. So if they made a Hello Kitty beer, you'd be all I'd in. be that all over it. That is a genius it. idea. I know. Mean, all over it. Well, I'll I love sell that, that shit on the playground, dude. I, I love when they do those <laughs> alcoholic beverages that become... Criticized for marketing to children, like <laughs> monkey juice, and it looks like some cute thing, and it's all fruity, and it's filled with like vodka. It's always right. some shitty vodka, but you look at the packaging, and it's clearly targeting yeah. children. I Dude. mean, clearly, like I don't know if anyone Joe remembers Camel. Joe Camel. Yep. Oh my God, Joe Camel is was the worst offender. Where it was like it was a cartoon, cute, funny animal with a dick for a nose. With well, the dick for the nose, and if you look really carefully, at, like the side was sex. definitely vaginal lips. Oh really? I didn't oh, notice those. Oh, abs- What does no. that say about me? No, if you look at it, if you take the Joe Camel and you just look at the one part, it is so sexualized that imagery. It's insane. Huh. Please, if our ladies might Google image it right now, science and insert officers. it, yeah. science officers, and insert it into the video at at a point that'll make me look smart that I'm saying <laughs> it. Um, I think, that, yeah, I mean, it, it was so obvious, but there's so much, you know, stuff like that in marketing where yeah, it's just, yeah. you know, subliminal. I mean, whether it's like misspellings like F C U K things, or you know, I'm excuse me, I'm burping. I'm okay. burping because we're drinking you beer up tonight, on a podcast <laughs> called Drinking with Comics. There will be burps that will occur randomly. I, I try will. to sneak penis in every ad I create. I yeah, will tell yeah. you this. A couple weeks ago, um, Sarah found something for me, and I couldn't believe that this still existed. I hadn't seen it in like 25 years. Candy cigarettes. Oh, I bu- I bought them. You so, can you there are places you can buy like old timey candy where it's like yeah. So yeah, and bubblegum cigars. Those are good. I've never you know? even seen those. And they have powder. You can kind of like, and then blow no. out powder, right? Cotton candy condoms. That. That's they don't really make those, What's but going I, on they should, I'm just throwing out the idea. <laughs> That's if a genius. You have two genius cotton ideas candy today, condoms. Dude. Yeah. I'm going to do, my next comedy album will be a beer. Because yeah. you're talking about the beer, I'm like, fuck that. I'm just going to put a sticker on my comedy album. What is Wait that? a sec. What is this? <laughs> dude. Oh, no. Those are candy cigarettes. You have a pack of candy cigarettes on you. Wow. Well, he is a bit of an yeah. addict. Yeah. 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 Give it up for Eric. Nice. Eric. Nice. For people that don't believe that this exists or you know, did exist. I do want to, I just want to point out. Because it had this sort of chalky right. sugar where it looked like you were smoking yes. as a little, I remember being a kid just in case. Yeah. and loving those candy cigarettes. Yeah, yeah, they had that. that. <laughs> I just, I do want to point out that we've, we've been rolling for 26 minutes. We've not talked about any comics or Okay, movies. we will. We'll get there. Okay, but um, all right, this go ahead. This might be a longer episode. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay you if it is. You might have to amend your 60 minutes. So, you know, we might go 90 or two, I w- I three do, and a half hours. I want to do a quick shout out. Until we run um, out of beer, we'll keep We're talking. doing shout outs now? We're, we're, I want to mention that. Um, Quick show. So, Darker June is a company out of Austin. Um, I, I write a column for Jupe called The Comic Column every week, and I've, I've covered a couple of, um, of their Kickstarters for comics, and uh, it's, it's really good stuff. I'm really looking forward to it. They have one coming out called Wicker. 
But um, they just launched. Now I'm gonna t I'm gonna get this. Just happened today, and I and I tweeted him, and I said, you know, do you mind if I if I announce this? He said, please do. So um, they they just came up on this site. I'm gonna mispronounce it. Patreon.com. Patron. It, Patron. That's like a drink. Yeah, that's what. Okay, so Patron. But it's spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Okay, but so basically what this is right now. I mean, and I. I between work and coming here, I had very little time to look at it, but it basically looks like a subscription service for their online content, and this includes their comics. Um, they have a comic called, um, uh, Ru wait, is it Runes or Runes? Sorry, Ricky. Um, but it's post-apocalyptic. Uh, it looks fantastic. And then Wicker, which, it, again, I'm really looking forward to. And then they also have some other stuff that they're putting up on. There's some pros, and they're working on some films and stuff. But um, it's very cool. Um, the website is P-A-T-R-E-O-N dot com backslash darker june and uh check it out it's when you see the art and read some of the like kind of beginnings and philosophies behind this stuff descriptions it's it's really cool and i think that they're really it seems like they're really trying to grasp the bull by the horns and like enter this you know weird new media that is now even affecting comics where so much stuff is going digital and whatnot and uh, I don't know it, it looks really cool I was excited when I saw it I'm, I'm very happy for them and I will get some inf more information from them and we'll do something further in a later episode so um, so that was that yeah now I have another thing here uh -oh. this is gonna be fun because we we all go back to the 80s with comics right yeah so yeah, we, have, yeah. we have a question that's been in our mailbag for about a, two months from Chris Widerstrom, who's, who lives in Chicago, and he's actually here tonight. So, Chris! Woo! Now, I he's like, do I have to fly out there to get my fucking question? Yeah, <laughs> and I was just going to say, so you, next time you ask a question, be, be prepared to book a ticket. You can't answer that shit until you come back out. So. But, so his question was basically like, remember like in the 90s, tons, just marketing for comics went bananas, and it was all about the artist and not about the story, and just, just stupid marketing tactics mainly with the covers of the comics, right? So there was the die cut and the hologram and the foil stamped and the scratch and sniff. Smell and the one, you know. And the collect one of four covers. Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, put them together? Yeah. Yeah. They still do that shit. I think chromium. Yeah. Chromium? chromium. We, got, we got a little chromium oh, over here. What is that? We're going to snort chromium. cocaine off of it. <laughs> like, really? <laughs> oh, my God. But so anyway, so he, he basically said, hey, what was, this, what was the stupidest, most ridiculous thing that you saw? Now, I have to admit, like, I, my mind immediately was like, oh, there were tons. And I'm like, I, don't, I can't remember any. I, I don't know. So I dug through, you know, when I moved. You found some of the dumbest oh, ones? Yeah. Oh, now, this is awesome. I guarantee there's dumber <laughs> ones, but these are pretty dumb. It's a good and start. I'm just, I'm going to come out with what I think is probably, if it's not the dumbest, it, I don't know. So tell me what you think. <laughs> it's like Silver Surfer took Wolverine a shit on that cover. <laughs> it's number 100 of Wolverine. That's exactly it's a hologram. <laughs> I, I don't know if you could see this, but it's but it's it's Wolverine oh, and you can see his skeleton is adamantium yeah. skeleton but, underneath. But you can't see it because it's a shitty hologram. So it just well, looks yeah. literally, what did you say? Like Silver like, Surfer? Like, like Silver Surfer on? poop. Yeah, there you go. On the so, cover. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I bet Silver Surfer's poop is like it probably silver. looks just like that. Yeah, power cosmic. I wonder how. How does the council rule? This is the worst one. What are your other selections? Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Saving the other possibility for worst until last. They all have silver on them in some way. Yeah, well, a lot, a lot of them. Do. This is this is Robin to the Joker's wild, and it's just the bat symbol with another yeah, now, hologram. I have thing. no idea Crap why next. I own that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, weren't there five variations? Five. There were, yeah, yeah. Each cover, each each issue I had you, many sir. variations. Yes. How? Wow. You knew? I thought I was the only person that bought Robin too. I mean, he's the guy that asked the question, right? That? I didn't even or was that was that Skeletor that just? Time. <laughs> he's like Skeletor can throw his voice. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> so this is a little bit more subtle, but it still has that like. I don't Let's know. Is out. that chromium? Yeah, I don't yeah. remember it's, chromium. Well, it's, we gotta show it. We have to show it to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll get it out of there and then look, look inside. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, Ooh. that's what I dig about these. Oh. Oh. I'm attracted. That you can feel. Yes. <laughs> now, you know, here's the funny thing. I think Scott Lovedell wrote the issue, so it's everything inside is garbage. That's the funny thing. <laughs> so it's Ooh, like, oh, somebody's apologizing to Scott Lovedell next fuck, week. Fuck, no. <laughs> no that, that'll be great. Well, I just need nope. to apologize. <laughs> okay. Now, okay. This one, this Sean's one's, like, we need to be more I, positive I like, on the show. It makes sense, but it's yes. still a gimmick, right? All right, so, yeah, yeah. So no, here it's, we go. it's good design, actually. <laughs> I've described this interesting design. Wolverine number 50... 
But it's got, look, it's like his claws ripped through the comics. So it's a, it's a... Only oh. with Wolverine. <laughs> covers. Covers there. Well, you know, are... ruined. It's not mint in, uh, it's not mint in no, all. That's fine. <laughs> Acid-free backing board. So okay. now, last. And we, we actually tried this segment once last before. Last and least. Yes. We tried this segment once before and it didn't make the cut to the final episode, so i got to bring this back out. Um, as Mike stated, the, probably the most overprinted comic. Now, a little background. Uh, when when X Force number one came out in in what <laughs> nineteen yeah see the last started again I I, I was background. such a, I was such an idiot and there was a comic shop called Hero Land in Worth on one hundred eleventh and they did this thing where like we're having Rob Liefeld sign and for twenty dollars you can get all five well it's one cover but it was poly trading cards trading card yeah. you can get it autographed and this and that now here's a funny thing I didn't think of as a kid it was like most signings you go and he signs a book right. You never got to see the artist. They were like, yeah, he's going to sign it at a certain time, and then we'll call you, and you can pick him up. <laughs> he so, never showed up? No, well, they never invited anybody to the signing. It was just like, give us your money, we'll have him sign your books, and then you can pick them up. Curious. So, seriously, <laughs> like, he didn't really <laughs> sign the book. Like, really? Thanks, Harold Land. Yeah. Now, as I also did. Are they still in business? No, and okay. here, All right, you, you may remember this. Here's the funny thing. This just proves that what goes around comes around. Years later, I met a dude that had his best friend worked at this comic shop. And he's like, oh, man, you know, that guy is such an asshole. You know what my friend did? He was working on, like, a Wednesday, and it was slow. They ordered a pizza, and as they're eating the pizza, they took Action Comics number one off the shelf no. and read it with their greasy-ass fingers. So all I got to say, wow, what goes around comes around. But there, there you go. Is this the worst? I mean, it's Rob Liefeld's art, you know. It is you know. the worst. It's the worst variant. So comic. I'm I'm a George Perez fan myself. It's like, how many characters can I fit on one cover? Yeah. There's 600 DC characters on <laughs> Crisis on Infinite Infinite Earths. That's why it was a crisis. Sorry, that's, they, a, uh, that's good. I, I like that. Super inside. Only three people got that. I got it. I got it. Okay, good, good. Okay, so I guess, three. but I guess four. that's three, four. four. Okay, four go. people got He's that. He's just joke. drunk. He didn't get it. <laughs> He's like, I got that. George shit. Perez. I'm getting a hot dog. <laughs> I can't remember the book, but Malibu had a book that was like shot with a bullet. So Did they actually shoot it with a bullet. The, that's what they said. I don't know, but it, like through the the center, not just the cover, but the entire book, there was a, there was a hole in the whole book. I think the Ravager. I, 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 or something? I, I, I have to admit that, like having done Film Threat magazine in the '90s, in the late '80s and '90s, I would do stuff like that just because I thought it was cool. We did a cover where like there's a bunch of holes in it, like. You know, a character was shooting. It was like a mafia mm -hmm. character, and there are like holes in it. On I did the cover? One, on the cover. And we did another cover where there were different different variations of splat splats of blood. Hmm. So, and then we had wraparound covers. So I liked stuff like that from an artistic standpoint, mm -hmm. but it, it is really gimmicky with the comics. The stuff that bugs me is the hologram stuff because I just think that just looks like crap. Stupid. I have a film and threat confession. Oh, okay, let's hear it. So, so film threat. Was a, a fantastic magazine started by Chris Gore in, in the '80s, right? Late '80s, and uh, I was, you know, probably 15. Not to make you feel old, but I couldn't buy porn yet. Well, sir. Uh, but he did. He did an issue with Tracy Lords and talk about uh, enhanced covers. Dude. Right, right. My Tracy Lords issue of Film Throat was so crusty in five months. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. So. Uh, you know, you made me the man I am today, Chris. Well, uh, thank you. Cheers. You're, you're welcome. Can I shake your hand? Yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> wow. Actually, my favorite gimmick... I'm left-handed. My favorite gimmick is not to do with... I mean, the hologram stuff, like, I think you're a fucking moron if you decide you're going to buy one of those comics. I mean, for the most part, I think it's pandering and it's mm -hmm. desperate because it's a book that's not selling yeah, well right. or it's, it's a, a cheap tactic. Here's my... When it comes to content, it'd be interesting to talk about content that is a gimmick. My favorite one is, this issue, Robin dies. Yeah, right? And it's Batman holding Robin, or Superman holding Supergirl, or whoever it is who dies. Now, legitimately, Robin has died. Right. So there have been several Robins, which I love the idea of Robin. You, Batman should just get like a new Robin every year. Like they should do America's Next Top Robin. Nice. It'd be like, oh. it'd be like a TV Genius show. idea. Yeah, but, but um, I love like in terms of Content gimmicks, killing off a character is one of the. I actually, I actually made a list before I came here nice. of the biggest cliches 
in comics. Ooh. Can I can I read? This? Yeah, totally. Let's okay, hear it. first of all, I have to find the list, and it's all in right. my little notes. Well, so why are you have talking to give about me a minute? It. Like, while, while I'm looking for why, it, why, why you look for it? Wolverine's know, about to die. You know, with the, yeah, yeah, that's right. They're gonna kill, but kill him off to do what? Obviously, sell more comics, yeah. right. have him evolve. What is he gonna be a ghost like Peter Parker and inhabit the body of a dead Doc? O that makes no. That right. first of all, I know people who defended that run. It was like, oh, there was such a good storyline. Oh, the dance. I thought thing. it was the dumbest. Storyline. It makes me not want to read comics right. because it sounds like a horrible episode of True Blood, which I know is like a contradiction in terms because pretty much every episode of True Blood <laughs> is aw is awful and dumb. And when you actually articulate the story out loud to someone, you think this is a fucking stupid show. <laughs> but like that's that's. I mean, it is. It is. But also, I watch every episode. Yeah. Okay. So because it is a stupid soap opera. And, and you know, I I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm sucked in, so to speak. Oh, no uh, pun intended. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> so, um, but I love those. Okay, so I'm gonna find my list while while I you guys. Check. I will say, as far as gimmicks go, you know that Robin that he's talking about. You remember the gimmick with that? With the nine hundred yes, number. Yes, the one okay, number. Okay, explain it. Explain it because this is brilliant. They you had, remember this? They had in like the penultimate issue. They're basically like, okay, you so decide. You decide, does Jason Todd live or die? And they had a 1-800 number, and you called. And the best part is, like, he was voted to die. That's fantastic. Like, why would you even bring another Over, Was it overwhelming? What was the, like, yeah, oh, on the mic, on the mic, like, sir, on the mic, on the, on the mic. Like, like, audience, please. Like, three people said keep him alive, and everybody else in America was like, kill that. Well, that was how I discovered 900 numbers, was... <laughs> <laughs> I accidentally called the wrong number. Don't blame number. me, don't blame me for that one. Okay, so, so I made a list of... What I consider to be the typical comic book, the superhero comic book plot lines. Okay. okay. So in no particular order, losing and or changing your powers. Okay. Yeah. Someone dies. Yeah. New costume. Yeah. Okay. Finding out who your parents really are. Yeah. Or finding a lost relative, mother, father, sister, brother. Clones. Okay. Yeah. Clones. Clones, right. Uh, getting married. Yeah. That Superhero is a cliche, dude. Yeah. Let me tell you. Superheroes <laughs> fighting each other, always ending in a draw, right? Uh, okay, here's uh, superhero quits, and then someone else puts on the mask. Yeah. Uh, joining a super team and inevitably quitting that same super team, and then eventually rejoining that super right. team. Um, secret identity being revealed, and then reboot and renumbering, and then doing all of those nine plot lines again. Right. That's pretty much... In all the years I've read comics, these are the ten that, off the top of my head, I just came up with. I'm sure you guys have ones that I left out or whatever, but these Leave are. Leave them in the comments. Yeah. Yeah, but like this, this is. I mean, I can email this to uh -huh. you. It's, it's. I just made a list because that. It's, I, it, you just you see these recurring, and now you see it in the movies yeah. too. You know where where they have to kind of regurgitate these these same plot lines. What what speaking comic of you, the oh, speaking of the movies, there was a rumor that. Um, Originated with comic book resource that Scott wanted oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah. guys so, to talk about. Okay, so this is actually this is a perfect point for this question. And so, who is Scott? Scott? Scott is a longtime listener from Cincinnati, Ohio. Okay, Scott. At least nine episodes. Okay, Scott, let's let's hear your question <laughs> or, and or your comment. So I have to proxy. So basically, Thanks he wants us. a comment on the rumor that Marvel's getting rid of all mutants when they re reboot next year. So we talked about this a little bit before we started rolling. So the basic idea is... And we have some inside information. And we have from some inside Southern information. From what? Oh, yeah. what? No, oh, no, dude, you call him out by name. We'll bleep it. Joe can bleep it. i got to give Joe something to do when he's editing. <laughs> Stan Lee is gonna I haven't hashtagged anybody this week. I, I, can, can we please recognize I've not hashtagged anybody oh, this week? You're going to get Leland Palmer tonight by Stan Lee. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so... So basically, so here's the thing. Like, you know, everybody knows Marvel's making their movie universe, and before they were in a place where they could do that... They, you know, sold the rights to Fox and to Universal, Sony. whoever, Sony, to do Spider-Man. Fox and Sony. Okay, Fox so, and Sony. So, so, Sony has Spider-Man, Fox has mutants. The mutants, and all the X-Men, and, and the Fantastic Four. Four. Okay. So, so these, these are... Who has Ghost Rider? Somebody else has Ghost Rider. Yeah, Spider. Ghost Rider. No, Ghost Rider is Sony. And Punisher some is somewhere. Punisher, too. I think is that Universal. Lions Gators. I think it's <laughs> yeah, Universal or Lions. I don't think they can work with Punisher, man. In the Marvel universe in the movies right now. But yeah, I, I like the Warzone. Yeah. I hate the one with the Volta. But but anyways, you were saying sorry. It's, no 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 no. That's good. It's information. So basically, um, you know, Marvel wants these characters back, 
And so. the deal originally when they sold the rights to make these was in perpetuity. So as long as these companies, Fox and Sony, keep making movies every so many years, they keep them. They recently lost Daredevil. And Marvel, actually, there was this rumor where Marvel was like, hey, you know what? You can keep Daredevil a little bit longer if you give us back Silver Surfer and Galactus, because that would, of course, fit into the Guardians of the Galaxy thing that they're doing mm -hmm. now, where they're kind of taking their universe to the, the cosmic level. But, um, so, with these other companies having their characters, the, the, this rumor has arisen that basically, like, okay, so Marvel is going to start clamping down on, like Chris was saying earlier, what, like, the licensing rights on Fantastic Four, on Spider-Man, on X-Men, there was a rumor that, you know, basically they're trying to sync these movies before they come out so that eventually these companies will be like, just take, take the rights back. We don't want them anymore. They're not, they're, they're not uh, worth anything. So, I mean, what do we know? What's, we talk well, about we before. know that if you read the internet, we know that this next Fantastic Four movie is going to suck donkey balls. <laughs> isn't, isn't Doctor Doom that's, a woman? Is that's that, pretty, is that true? Uh, that I'm not sure. I do know that the cast are... You know, Look, if we know anything about the Fantastic Four, and you read the classic comics and you read them up until today, uh, Mr. Fantastic is an older man with graying temples who's into super young, hot blonde chicks. And that is not... The plot of the new Fantastic Four movie. Yeah, because they're all like twenty. Because they're all in their twenties, which is bullshit, and they're not even they like work for the U.S. government, and it's just oh, it's just wow. everything I have heard from the inside, and I do have inside sources, people who have read the script and looked at the storyboards and know what's going to happen, and it sounds like a steaming pile of shit. They've they've read they've they've altered the characters in a way where it almost has no connection to the original comic, the spirit of the original comic. What I'm really excited about is I had a conversation with Peyton Reed. I don't know if you know who Peyton Reed is. Mm -hmm. Peyton Reed um, did that uh, cheerleader movie uh, years ago. What was the name? Bring it on? Yes. He did bring it on. He is also, he's the one who took over the directing reins for, from Edgar Wright. He's a North not, Carolina boy. Oh, yeah, from yeah, Edgar yeah. Wright. Peyton Reed, great guy. Met him at Comic-Con one year and we were just talking because he's a film threat reader. We were chatting up. His vision for the Fantastic Four movie, which ended up being directed by Tim Story, mm -hmm. and those in those two piece of shit uh, Fantastic Four movies that they made, but the Peyton Reed. How do you really feel? Uh, yeah, Peyton Reed's <laughs> Peyton Reed's vision for those were they were to to be set in the sort of Camelot era of JFK in the early '60s. Oh, it was going to be really? a period piece, and it was going to be legit, legit in terms of of owing a lot to the original comics. Well, that fits and into the in space the, race in the and whatnot, spirit, right? Yeah, exactly, in the space oh, race. Wow. And so, like, his whole vision was, I want to be true to how that looks. So I have a lot of faith. Like, I think Peyton Reed is the real deal. I'm excited that he's taken over Ant-Man. I'm disappointed that Edgar Wright, because who is I he love Ant -Man? Edgar Wright. No, Peyton Edgar Wright is not No, no, no Peyton Reed. Is he Peyton, yeah, Reed, Peyton Reed is the, the director. Oh, I didn't hear about this. Okay. But, I mean, it's... it's I mean, who knows why that situation? It seems like it was a, you know, at least it was at a least little disappointing the, when Edgar Wright left. Because yeah. I love Edgar Wright. I think yeah. Scott Pilgrim is one of those movies. Like, I don't know what other movies opened the same weekend that Scott Pilgrim opened, but I know we will not remember what those fucking movies are. Yeah, right. But I guarantee you, ten years from now, you'll say, "Oh, that movie Scott Pilgrim was brilliant." Yeah. And uh, because there were a lot of haters of. Uh, What's Sarah. His, uh, Michael Sarah, which I am not, but I know a lot of people just got so they just sort of had Michael Sarah fatigue. He was in a lot of movies at the time, and and although I have to a plug, if I could just do a plug, plug, plug. Uh, for his YouTube channel, if you look at Michael Sarah's YouTube channel, it's. Freaking brilliant! Really, he's he was making, great in uh, "This Is the End." Too. He he makes this. He mm -hmm. one of his short films. He was great in "This Is the End" because he makes fun of himself. But his YouTube channel is amazing. There's a short film out there it, it, on his YouTube channel where he plays a guy who's in a wheelchair who smells like urine, trying to trying to go on a bunch of dates with girls that he meets online. Have you seen it? It's amazing. This Michael Sarah short film. It is so dark and effed up. I mean, he's really kind of, I mean, you know, he's, he's doing the thing where it's like he just, he'll go away for a bit and I guarantee he'll come back and because we'll miss him because he's going to be in the Arrested Development movie if they make that. And I, I heard rumored what the, what, the, what the plot is for the Arrested Development movie and it sounds brilliant. Really? Let's hear it. Oh my God, do you want to hear it? Yeah. Hear okay, it. bleep it, bleep it if you can't really. No, we'll just say he told us. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I always like to say Nick Levy. I just I just blame everything on Nick Levy. <laughs> just blame this guy. Uh, but, but okay, so the, 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 the rumored the rumored plot of the Arrested Development movie is that 
they bought the Hollywood bought the rights to make a movie about the family, right? And so the whole movie, so they're doing a big budget movie with like Brad Pitt and Angela Jolie starring, you know, based oh on the, the family yeah. in Arrested Development. And then the plot is, is them trying to sabotage the making of the movie about themselves. Yes. That sounds great. Which, which, which they all know is going to be a shitty movie. So they're themselves, but they're witnessing Hollywood making a story about them and they're disgusted and annoyed by it. And then there's some people that are selling out and they're involved in the making of the movie and then others are like not. the magician brother. Dude, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, so no. it's like, so it's all like, of course it's backstabbing and clever and I can't freaking wait because that, when, when that season came out on Netflix, I remember it was like last Memorial Day. Not this past one, the one year before when all those rest of development, that new season, just like, I just watched the whole thing in one day. It was amazing. Wow. It was so good. I'll stop talking. No, no, I love it. I dude. have gone off dude. on a rant. Well, you, you've said some things you probably shouldn't have said, which yeah, is what we well, hoped. Well, you can believe it. You can believe it. <laughs> no, no, fuck around. That's just, that's the... I said some things yeah, I shouldn't yes, have said last week. So Sarah. Yes. I will say that I agree with you about Scott Pilgrim, but the movies that opened that same weekend, I don't think they're going to go away. Let, let's, let's hear it. What, what were they? Uh, the Expendables. Bro. Fuck yeah, Piece Stallone. Of shit. It was not good, Stallone, know, but it was still Stallone. Okay, what else? Inception. Okay, oh, that was yeah. actually okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, Despicable Me. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, that was one weekend? Yeah. Why did they... Uh, well, uh, yeah, oh, gosh. Okay. Eat, pray, love. Oh, oh fuck, fuck that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so I don't think... Okay, that. so that was actually a good weekend at the movies. <laughs> good weekend, yeah. yeah. That was actually one of the better weekends at the movies. Uh, on the mic, sir. On the mic, sir. If you're going to ask a question, uh, we must Mike. get on the mic. Mike, will you hand me a beer? Actually, Can we get a beer for Sean? Yeah, you hand me two so beers? Afraid of that two beers? Film. <laughs> they showed it to everyone. Yo, my, to see oh my god, yes. you are absolutely right. That year at Comic Con, they, they did too many preview screenings where I remember, I remember because I'm friends with Edgar Wright on Facebook, and I said to him, Who do I have to fuck? to see a preview screening because I all of my friends had already seen it so the audience that would have gone to see it and supported it because the trailer was brilliant I'm like don't show me anymore it's amazing I mean I own the blu-ray I love that film I'll revisit it the music the soundtrack's amazing um, but you're right that's actually that actually was a good weekend at the movies I mean Inception mm -hmm. is one that I believe will hold up Expendables screw that but I mean <laughs> everything else although I'm excited about because Bruce Campbell Recently yes. said that he wants to see the Expendables of horror. Yes. Oh, that'd be good. Yes, yes. I think it'd be, which I think would be awesome. I bet he does because he would be if, in that. If there's another, if there's <laughs> another, uh, if there's another Gore's Light in that uh, I got you. The thing, I would love oh, to get. Oh man, one. I'd like to talk about something. I'd like to talk about the the, the controversy involving my T-shirt. What the one you're wearing now? The T-shirt that I'm wearing now. I'd like we'll to I'd like to talk about this controversy. If, this if robe, it's, if it's young on camera, man. Let's talk about this. Just oh yeah, let's talk about that. Just for a moment, I think I think we all need to talk about about this subject, which is Sean. You should. Well, so we know DC is is making an attempt to get into the movies, and uh, they cast Ben Affleck. And uh, I think it's okay. I ain't mad at okay, Affleck. Okay, Ben Affleck as Batman by show of by, by uh, audience interaction time. Audience, audience interaction. <laughs> Ben Affleck. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, wait. Just. Let's get your enthusiasm. Let's get your enthusiasm. Okay, Ben Affleck is Batman. Yes. Hey, hey, hey. Fuck you, fuck you. No, no. It's happening with or without. Yeah, what do you I just don't care. Are you down with the Affleck as Batman? I actually think he's the best. He's. I think he's Affleck is the, best. Is the no, he's the best creative mind involved in that project. Argo was awesome. Because, I love Argo. Because Argo was absolutely amazing. Just forget forget Daredevil, which was a terrible script. Right. Just an yeah, awful script. It was, script. Yeah, you and can't it was, hold it against him at this Yeah, point. yeah, you can't hold that one against him. But it was look like at, 10, 11 years ago, too. Look at Ben Affleck's body of work. Yeah. Like, or is just like, his body, ladies. <laughs> yeah. Look Don't at, fuck his work. Just look at his body. Haggard, beer belly, Guard, much lady. like my body. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I actually think that I think creatively, 
he's the most talented person. I don't put my faith in Zack Snyder. No, I, don't I think that Zack Snyder is way too, it. way too into destruction. Uh, what's his name? Goyer. Goyer. Oh, fuck Goyer. That movie. It, we, oh, hashtag fuck David Goyer again dot com. Now, yeah. there will be no apology. <laughs> what? There will be no apology. No well, apology. well, we should, I mean, what do you guys think? You, you had some comments. <laughs> Any, any comment. Okay. We encourage commentary. Just quickly on the topic of this film, today, all day long, it was trending the picture reveal of Henry Cavill as Clark Kent, as if we didn't know what he would look like wearing a necktie. <laughs> no, no, no. He's, 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 and yeah. he was Clark Kent in that whole film. I was just saying, you know what's sad is that there's, there's been an like, entire movie and we don't know what he looks like as Clark Kent. D okay, Mike, you said this, like, issues ago. DC doesn't know how to play, play the game. You said DC does not know how to set their balls on the table. Marvel totally goes for it. DC, they, it's like they've been biding their time for no reason. Warner Brothers owns DC. They right. have for how long? Why their animation, the Marvel? cartoons are great. Games I'm, I don't like animation. Their games might be good. <laughs> Smallville was... I'm, you know, no offense against gay people, but Smallville was really gay. <laughs> like, people would come to me and like, I, I work at a comic shop. I don't know. If you know <laughs> people were like, like a dude would come in. He's like, dude, did you see Smallville last night? He's like, no, dude, fucking Doomsday was there, and he kicks, he kicked. Well, it's not Superman because he won't would put on a costume, no capes or whatever. And he's like, yeah, they they fought, they tore up Smallville, and they. Yeah, but so, they, so then I turn it on, like, and Doomsday looks like a fucking like a pro knockoff from Twilight. He's like a little blonde haired, spiky haired kid. No offense, no, nothing against spiky haired people. Um, <laughs> but, like, that's not Doomsday. You no, know? I, I agree with you. Like, I, I, yeah, I, in fact, I would always get one of the things when on Attack of the Show when I would review DVDs, and um, I, I really took a shit on Smallville. So you and I are in the same camp. It's yeah. like, let's take the most boring parts of the life of Superman and let's show all of them <laughs> and we'll cock tease you and we'll rub the head of our penis all around the outside of your vagina for eight fucking years and never stick the cock in. I love in. this guy. I love That's this guy. That's what Smallville was. It sucked balls. But it's that good. It would have been better if balls were sucked on <laughs> Smallville because then something would have happened. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, I fucking hated Smallville. I thought it was terrible. I hope that Gotham, which is supposed to be coming out this fall, which is supposed to be screened at San Diego Comic-Con. Looks good. I'm very excited. It looks good, but please don't, like, have it end with him becoming Batman or, like, it's a, like, have it be, like, it's, it's, I feel like that's going to be the first 30 minutes of Batman Begins for another eight years. Yeah. I hope it doesn't turn into that. Because I, I feel like Smallville was just it was just dumb, and after a while, it's just like let's hire really good-looking Hollywood actors who all look the same. Yeah, they're like it's like it's basically all the good-looking people fucked and made the actors who were in Smallville, and they're fucking annoying. There's no like character except for John Schneider, no Bodu, Bodu faces. Bodic well, whatever. Cool. I just, I just, I just, I don't like that. Like, where I can't even tell them apart because they all have high cheekbones. I don't fucking, nice. I can't, I can't fucking tell them apart. Yeah. They're all good looking assholes. <laughs> so, fuck them and fuck Smallville. Thank you. Well, here's the thing. That's my rant. I completely good. ignored it because it just, I mean, it looked awful. But here's the thing about yeah. the Gotham. I originally, when I read about this, I didn't realize that is it really going to be centered around young Bruce Wayne? I mean, I thought he was going to be if he's a character. He's, it, it kicks off like it, it's basically about the police force, right? It's so more, it's, what, it's, like, it's a police procedural in the it's set in Gotham that will you'll see the development and the origin of characters. I mean, it, you know, lions, down. the Penguin, it seems weird Catwoman, that going to tie in Bruce yeah. Wayne's. Like my understanding was there was a book in. Ten years ago, called Gotham Central, I think, by Greg Rucker. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it was basically Gotham Police Force. But it was like present day, day, right? Yeah. But so that was kind of what I was hoping it was going to be. But when you tie in, like, oh, here's young Bruce Wayne, and you'll see him kind of gestate. I think it's a, I think like, it's a good idea. I think I think Bruce Wayne's well, journey is much more interesting later. than Clark Kent's. You know? Well, yeah, but I'm sorry. I mean, Super, Superman sucks, dude. There's just no other way to say it. He's just awful. He's not a good character. No, I mean, I there, thank you. Well, and now Superman kills. So well, yeah. that's what? a whole other. Here's the thing, and he Batman. still sucks. You can make him as dark or as light as you want. The only person that ever wrote him that I thought was interesting was Grant Morrison because he's like, well, let's make him be able to like 
you know, bend dimensions and all I, this weird shit. But I got all into John Burns' run recently, and, and there's this issue of Amazing Heroes. You remember Amazing Heroes? It was like the comic book news magazine. Right, oh, I love that. And, and John Burns' pitch to DC was genius, and it was... Because it doesn't really make sense to put a baby in a spaceship and send them a million light years across the universe. Because who's going to feed them? So, <laughs> so uh, Lara, what, Lara, is that her name? Mm-hmm. She was pregnant. Jor-El built the spaceship to send her pregnant okay. across the universe to Earth, which makes so much more sense, you know? Yeah. And, uh, you know, and then she died early on or something. But DC said there's one thing you can't, ever fuck with and that's the two page origin story of Superman but didn't they fuck with it anyway because at some point didn't they reveal that like Krypton is alive and in like a little glass box that's Candor, dude I don't know what's Candor? yeah Candor is what we're having tonight it's Candor. <laughs> yeah Candor should be a, a, a microbrew do we have any beer there should be a beer called Candor. There should be a beer called Mr. Mixoplex. I think Ooh. I would I yeah. would drink that because isn't that how you have to be drunk to pronounce his name? Yeah, and then and then if you say it backwards, you're suddenly sober. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> nice. Pronounce Mr. Mixoplex backwards. That should be that should be the nerd drunk test. Dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna bust or my spell nerd it backwards. Shit. I think it's Mixopitalic. Mixopitalic? Oh yeah. Ta-da. I'm yeah. not getting laid tonight, ladies. Yeah. <laughs> I know how to say that shit. You, you want to ride to the hot dog stand? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Full circle. Bacon wrap hot dogs so, are delicious. So now let's l- uh, let's let's spring here. I want to use this as a platform. Yes. Okay. So, okay. you know, I'm very condescending when it comes to DC assembling their movie universe, and it's just you know what prove prove it. Marvel, I want to get into this because I thought this was interesting. You know, you are eventually going to get if you saw X Men Days of Future Past, they very. I didn't love the movie, but I liked it. I'm more interested, we talked about this, I'm more interested in the arc that the movies are going to take um, than the individual movies. But they recast, they, they're going to come into this where they have to recast people, right? So they re- successfully recast Magneto and Charles Xavier, two characters I fucking hate. And they did it really well. And I really like James McAvoy, and I really like Michael Fassbender. I think that they, that's yeah, so smart, right? So they're going to stick with this timeline now. But eventually... There's already been all these titterings around the internet, like they're gonna have to recast Wolverine or get rid of him, right? So, with the Avengers, you know, there's been rumors for like a year or more now. Oh, is Downey Jr. He's only gonna sign on for one more movie or this or that? And there's been rumors that oh, Age of Ultron, he's gonna die and he's gonna end up in the Vision's body and all this. So, my question to you guys is like, we've read comics, you know, thirty years roughly, right? At least. Yeah. A lot world, more world. than that, but keep going. How do you? <laughs> how, how should they do it? I mean, I'm thinking. Okay, we have the Netflix series. Well, they coming. successfully look. The Hulk has been played by three. Bruce Banner has been played by three yeah. different people. Right. And and it, it's but that's it's a character fine. that's Mark Wahlberg. It was it Mark Wahlberg who said that he would be interested in playing Tony Stark. Yes, he did. Oh god. So so I mean, <laughs> whatever. He's not the worst he part. The new he's, he's not the worst train. part of the new Transformers. <laughs> 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 but he's still Marky Mark. But go ahead. <laughs> But, okay, so the whole Don't fuck his daughter. That's all I can say. I saw the movie. Like the one so if you saw the movie, the whole plot is, please don't fuck my daughter. That's all I got out of the preview. What's that? That's all I got out of the preview was like, don't preview fuck was, my daughter. Hey, whatever you do. I know these giant robots are around. If you stick Who wanted your sauce inside movie? my daughter, forget it. I spoiler alert. I, I, I saw it for free. I saw oh, it for free. God. That's okay. So um, I do. I, I was. I was totally gonna go to see it, but like Don't every me. universal like thing was like this sucked, and it's um, three hours long. And it made with the. It was one of the biggest box yeah, right, offices ever. this summer, and so worldwide it's done huge. Yeah. Maybe that's why Shia LaBeouf just had his breakdown. He saw because it. Oh my god, the Shia LaBeouf off. breakdown was. It was interesting. It was. It was I gotta say, it's hilarious. It makes me regret. Not having Shia LaBeouf in my celebrity's poop book, <laughs> um, I think in the next printing, you know, yeah. uh, that may change. But His yeah. poop is just going to look like everybody else's. He, like, fought a homeless guy for Defecates in paper bags. <laughs> yeah. Did yeah. Shia LaBeouf fight a homeless guy recently? Yeah, Shia LaBeouf. He tried He's, to He's, like, doing bum McDonald's fights now? Remember was, bum oh. fights? He was, he was disruptive <laughs> at, a ho- at a Broadway play. <laughs> oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And, and then he, yeah, they know. dragged him out, right? 
Yeah. Awesome. Well, he was having a bad was day. Cabaret? You know what? He's a lot more interesting than Mark Wahlberg uh, wait, at this now, point. Yeah. Where did that happen? Did that happen in New York? New York. Yeah, New York. Why didn't they just Probably. put two in the back of his uh, fucking not, skull and leave him in the alley? Really? Because well, even Stevens play. was a masterpiece. <laughs> just kidding, it wasn't. Wait, what was? What was it? Even <laughs> Stevens. Never mind. I don't even know. Never mind. It's where he's But you, you, you were talking about the Marvel, the Marvel thing. So here's what I'm thinking, like. They're going to have to recast, yeah. or they're going to change the lineup of the Avengers. We know that, right? Mm -hmm. So they're really? seeding this now with the Netflix series. They're going to do a Daredevil, a Luke Cage, a Jessica Jones, and the Iron Fist series that's going to build up into, on Netflix... Defenders. Defenders. Luke Cage has been a high... Pro which, you know, for ten years now, he's been a high-profile Avenger. I, I haven't really read most of that, but, I, I mean, he's recognizable. When you see, for a while, when you would see, like, the, you know, kind of... Advertisements for the Avengers. You see Thor, you see Captain America, you see Luke Cage, you see Iron Man. That's weird coming from our era because Luke Cage was so peripheral, but Brian Michael Bendis really brought him up. And well, you know, when it comes to aging, you know, black don't crack, right? Have you ever heard that saying? I've heard that saying. <laughs> so it's like, you know, you get like Sam Jackson looks the same now as he did 20 years ago. So it's like, it, whoever Luke plays Luke Cage will be fine. But so what do they do? What do they do? Do, do they flip the, you know, Avengers as a rotating cast? Right. Do they recast? Like, what do no, they do? No, I, I think that's what's going to happen is that you're going to see the Avengers evolve. They'll be sort of the core four, right? right. And then there'll be new ones. And I mean, obviously, you know, Quicksilver, Scarlet Witch. You know, and there'll be like Ant Man, and so so there'll be different incarnations of the Avengers. Mm -hmm. I don't think. There's Do you think that Tony uh, Robert Down Downey Jr. is always going to be Iron Man though in the movie? Well, I mean, always probably through Avengers three. Right. So, so that's the next one. See, or no, they, they have they have their shit yeah. planned to like twenty. I think it's uh, like twenty twenty nine. Yeah. yeah. Right. So yeah. he's not going to be him then. So I mean, do they? They're just going to recast. It's going to be, yeah. you know, look how many but people how have played. How many people have played Batman? Right, a lot of people. But have, it's always a reboot. Speaking of Batman, you know what I'd love to see? You ever watch that show on YouTube? That YouTube show, Superpowers Beatdown. Yeah, I freaking love that show. Were you on? I was. I was on an episode of that show where Batman fought Deadpool. Of course, Batman won. But um, what I would love to see is an episode of Superpowers Beatdown where Michael Keaton Batman from 1989 fights Christian Bale Batman from from the, the Christopher Nolan Batman movie. Wait, pre where, where basically he's like, I don't kill. <laughs> where, and then Michael Keaton's Batman just comes out with the Batmobile with the and machine like, gun and just kills and mows down Christian Bale. It'd be one of the shortest episodes of Superpowers Beatdown ever. And He'd that would be the end. He'd those clowns in Batman Returns. It would be remember he flipped the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman oh, versus... Man. 2005 Christian Bale Batman and they fight and it will be 30 seconds. I like it. Of Christian Bale being turned into meat. <laughs> Basically bat meat. Bat meat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my theory of 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 the of, of casting on these Marvel movies. So uh, who who plays Captain America? Chris Evans. Who played Captain Who played Human Torch in Fantastic Four movies? Chris Cap Evans. Yeah, Chris Evans. Right. Now, so when Jack and Why does that guy not Die his fucking hair. He's played two characters from the Marvel Universe with blonde hair and will not dye his hair blonde. Let me tell you why. Because who the fuck cares? Fuck That's you, why. Chris <laughs> Evans. Is he's he not blonde? Pretty. No, he's got brown hair. Oh. Hashtag so hair. fuck you, Chris. Hashtag oh. that. Hashtag. Yeah. Well, wait, where's the audience stand on this? If you're going to play a character, it's like so easy. He's already, like, just dye your hair blonde. Who cares? He's not blonde. Uh, I thought he was blonde. No. I'm not looking at his hair. It's brown. And I'm not looking at his hair. Apparently so, not either. Hair. So Jack Kirby yeah. in the 60s. <laughs> Look at a picture of Jack Kirby drawing Johnny Storm. Put it next to a picture of Jack Kirby drawing Steve Rogers. Looks exactly the fucking same, right? Oh, wow. So it's like, it's like, yeah, people get all tripped out. Like, well, that's Chris Evans. He can't be Human Torch and Captain America. So, you know, like an artist leaves a comic, you know, and a new artist comes in. They're, it's going to be drawn a little different. It's going to be recognizable. I like that. I like yeah. that philosophy. That philosophy, because there's always going to be, this is why it's like, I don't give a crap about... Ben Affleck playing Batman, he's not going to be the last per person right. to play Batman. Right. There will be Batmans beyond Ben Affleck. Right. Right? Playing that character. Batman's eternal. Right. All kinds of. There will be the Batman. There will be Batman. There will be. Like, I, I love those weird mispronunciations like Robot. Remember Robot? No. Well, there's a Robot. Robot. 
No, Robert. Who said that? This is like Daniel the 30s. seems to know. This is like old Flash Gordon or Buster. Oh, oh, oh Robert. <laughs> no one remembers this. But what was me. that? The William Shatner with uh, uh, sabotage. Sabotage, sabotage. Oh. And sabotage. Is it, was there an argument like on set right, about this, right. this? is how you say it. And he's like, no, That's sabotage. <laughs> He's Canadian. Fuck him. So, <laughs> no, I hashtag love fuck Canada. <laughs> okay, so I love Canada, but their poutine is good. <laughs> hashtag love poutine. So. <laughs> We're, so we're so, out of time. So okay. so you know. We're out of time. Let's yeah. recap. Yeah. Let's <laughs> recap. <laughs> let's recap. Let's recap. Buy celebrities poop. Small <laughs> Smallville sucks ass. We've learned about some cliches that are in comics, like some gimmicks, like never buy a chromium comic, and it's awesome to mix your alcohol in comics. Yeah. Cheers, well, Chris. Yeah. Cheers. Well, thank, thank you for having Chris. me. Coming thank out. you for having me. Chris, show. you're gonna be at Comic Con. Where can people see you at Comic Con, dude? Uh, just follow my Twitter feed at that Chris Gore. My Instagram uh, also at that Chris Gore. Just go to chrisgore.com for all your Chris Gore needs. Right. right. I have I have a few, including <laughs> bigger wrap hot dogs, <laughs> not yours. <laughs> so to round it out, I'll just say you can follow us on Facebook, Drinking with Comics. Uh, you can check out our website, drinkingwithcomics.com. You can email us at drinkingwithcomics at gmail. And this is my favorite part, and nobody's using it yet. Come on. Well, we have, we've had a couple voicemails. Is it mails. Google Plus? No, it's not Google Plus. <laughs> it's, you can leave us a voicemail. Are we on LinkedIn? You can, no. <laughs> you can leave us a voicemail at 424-271-5610. What's we want this moment. Nobody call like you're the guy who was bitching about newspapers earlier. Like you want people to call us. I want my newspaper. <laughs> Here, let's Thank have you. a smoke. That What's was great. What's the number? Four two four. Four two four. Uh huh. Ooh. Two seven one. Five six one zero. Oh. Oh my God. You did good, Eric. You Thank you. Oh my God, these are hilarious. Eric, I don't know if you knew he was gonna <laughs> open those. I'm, I, I, it's I, fine. That's it's not like an heirloom, right? No, no. Okay. I gave up oh. <laughs> okay. But so anyway, hey, so I'm leaving a message for drinking with comics. This is drinking with comics. Uh, I have a nine. question. What's your Chris favorite Gore? Galactus storyline? Okay, this is Chris Gore. Could you Sarah, answer Joe the question Baxter? on the next episode? What? Okay, we'll bye. protect you tonight. That sounded weird. That was good. Anyway, good night, and you know, just keep drinking everything. Look at that. My cheese will be done.